a little bit about myself so around 20 plus years of experience i worked in different domains multiple certificates certificates mainly focus on coaching agile transformation training and also safe program consultant and trainer what i like most i like chess solving puzzles and sanskrit so i like to memorize the sanskrit verses as well so i think i i have memorized around 1000 verses at least i will have to figure out the total number but yeah 1000 for sure so i'm really very much interested in learning sanskrit and then trying to figure out what would be the meaning of that verse without translation that's what i'm looking for okay so what is safe house of lean as i mentioned this is a metaphor for lean so what is scaled agile framework the safe house of lean is part of lean agile mindset right one of the aspect like there are core values safe house of lean and then safe principles as well so we are discussing on the safe house of lean what is scaled agile framework safe for lean enterprise is a knowledge base of proven integrated principles practices and competencies for achieving business agility by implementing lean agile and devops at scale okay so what is lean then is a way of optimizing man machine money material and method of an organization toward creating value for the customer we'll talk about more in the next slide what is value and how so flint is a metaphor how the value is delivered in safe now very important aspect safe house of lean so there are pillars as well and then it talks about how we can achieve that but what i have done in this presentation is i have mapped some of the practices of scaled agile framework to the pillars then only we can see right the scale agile is walking the top right so let's go to the next slide hmm so question to you can you identify this gentleman anybody someone said jack welch he is jack welch he died actually in 2020 but let's look at what he did he is considered to be one of the greatest ceo of american companies so jack welch at the age of 45 he became ceo of general electric so he was ceo for 20 years 1981 to 2001 and then value delivered in terms of stock return was more than 4000 percentage in 20 years this is amazing g had was at once had highest market capitalization around 500 billion you might have heard that apple recently crossed 2 trillion market cap right at the time 20 years back g had market cap of 500 billion and the ceo was jack welch this image in he got the severance package of 417 dollar million in 2001 so that's what he delivered right for the company for the employees right that's the focus the value delivery is the focus so how do we define value in safe house of lean in the scale agile framework what we are saying is to achieve shortest sustainable lead time that's what if we can deliver that right this is also you can correlate with many agile principles the topic which vijay covered last time deliver value frequently often sustainable pace right so shortest sustainable lead time that's what we are looking for at the same time additional goals the best quality and value to people and society high moral safety and customer delight customer delight will be the last the best step customer happiness probably would be the first the customer is satisfied it is one the customer delight that's the highest level of customer achievement so what is value value is the benefit 
that your organization provides to customers employees society and to or the environment and very critical in today's world when everybody is talking about carbon free and environment friendly right? this may take the form of revenue for employees or shareholders by an enterprise services provided to citizens by government achievement of mission statement for non profit anything it's what you deliver some product you deliver or some services you deliver and then it should have a sustainable lead time from the idea to delivery that's the lead time short is sustainable if we can achieve that one that's what the target is the safe house of lead it talks about at the top the roof is value that's what we are focusing on and value is clearly defined right we want to do frequent deliveries right you know we will do it frequent delivery regularly that's what the target is with other additional goals as well so there are four pillars and if you notice the base is leadership very very important and then we are going to talk about each pillar including leadership as well and then we'll also see that where in scale agile framework those pillars are considered i also have some very good practical examples as well i would like to share along with the presentation as well so first pillar respect for people and culture so first and foremost thing you have to believe that people are human not resources see resources you can add 1 plus 1 equal to 2 but for human adella tinava antu heli va sum thala ten bada ಎಕ್ಸಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ನಾ ತಿನ್ನಲ್ವಾ ಸಕ್ರೆ ತಿಂದೆ ತಿನ್ನಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅವತ್ತನ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ when we talk about respect for people and culture how the respect will come i am human you are human too so to whomsoever i am dealing with right he is also a human being i have my own aspirations right i have my own feelings i am happy sometimes i am sad when something whatever i had decided that doesn't happen so similarly for other human beings as well right? similar something like the way you want to be treated treat other human beings so respect for people very important and people do all the work right yeah, we are going towards artificial intelligence and machine learning and everything but the people part you won't be able to move out of this one see when we we say that yeah artificial intelligence machine learning and then robots and other stuff they are taking away jobs but they are also creating new jobs as well so people are the key they are the one who are doing the work we have to change our thinking normally whenever i ask people that who is the customer do you deal with customer and then team members will say no uh, we never get a chance to work with the customer but who is actually your customer to whom you serve right your customer is whoever consumes your work so i am getting the requirements or i am passing the requirements to the development team development team is my customer i have to respect them if i am delivering as a developer some of the things or the code delivery to testers they are my customers if we change the mentality then everything will change otherwise it won't change the siemens let me take one example of siemens right in the covid time i think couple of weeks or few weeks back the ceo said that we want to empower our people we trust our people they can work remote remotely permanently and we trust them they we focus on their delivering the work wow the respect for people that is the respect they are they the respect they have for their people i am 100% sure that the people the employees will reciprocate because they are is any times the psychology if you say that i trust you then the person will try to make sure that that one they live to that value so that's going to happen let me talk to you about another example where it's completely opposite where 
I was asked in one of my assignment that I would like to know that how much time the business analyst and the product owners are spending on finalizing the requirement. So normally we take the time in terms of what is ready, scrum, uh, at the start definition of ready to definition of done. That's what we do. And then I was finding it difficult to get the time and then the query as well from the manager. So I said, why you want to do this one? Let's first identify that why it is required. And he said, no, we want to know whether they have enough work or not. They might not be working on some of the user stories, though they are in their queue and they just say that, nah, we are working on it. So I want to track all these things. This is not the respect for people, right? If you don't trust the people you hire, what kind of culture you are setting up? That's not going to work. I have another example where one of the MNC bank, uh, the head of the department, I think around at least 7,000 people are under her. And then probably as a, she regularly communicates with all like employees or contractor. And today I'm, I haven't met her face to face, but I see, I know that uh, who is her husband, how many kids she has, where they live, what they are doing, whether uh, where her elder parents live, where does she go for vacation and other stuff. So it's something to think about whether it is required that she should share all these things. It, some of the things are very personal, right? But that's the, so when I got that mail and I came to know about it when I had a respect for her. Yeah. What she is saying that, so I do care about your family as well. What you are doing, where you go for vacation. If you are not going for vacation, take some time off. That's the culture they want to bring. So one of the pillars, see respect for people are the one they are delivering value, right? So that is very essential. Now let, let's look at it, how SAFE implements this one. So scaled agile framework this is a very big one. Right? Let's just talk about the essential SAFE and then we will come to know. So individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Yeah, the PI planning should happen. PI planning is the heart of uh, ART, right? scale framework. If you are not doing PI planning, you are not doing SAFE. Everybody comes together. They get an opportunity to talk to each other, right? At the same time, how safe implement is one? Everybody is trained, right? First thing is train everyone and then launch trades. The company is investing in you. Transparency, one of the core values of safe. If it is more transparent, that means you are respecting people. You have a very good culture. You are not hiding anything. Innovation and planning iteration. That is another new stuff from Scaled Agile Framework where it gives opportunity to learn new things. It's like a dedicated time for learning new things. We, we, we will look into this in more details when we talk about innovation. But for innovation as well, you need creativity. Creativity needs space and time, right? And that's what this will offer. Safe says that you should have a continuous learning culture. And uh, in the PI planning as well, you have a confidence vote, right? So if you vote low, then you will be asked, you will get a chance to talk about what are your concerns are. But this is a way of respecting people and people will build the culture. Culture doesn't come automatically or it will take time. But who are the ones who is building the culture? They are the people who is building the culture. Let's look at flow. That's the second pillars, right? Let me share. Kitna uh, diti You might have heard this phrase. If not, uh, let me share the story. So Anand Mahindra, who is a chairman of uh, Mahindra Group in India, is very active on Twitter as well. So there was a car expo. And then in the car expo, a completely electric car was showcased. The Batistas was the name of the car. And 
it was costing around two million dollar. So Anand Mahindra posted a video of that car and talked about see the car is a fully electric car which is costing two million. And see the Indian normal Indian mentality we look at the average right. Average kitna hai, highway pe kitna hai and city me kitna hai. So one person asked him on Twitter, kitna deti hai, what is the average? And look at the week by Anand Mahindra. He responded, Sarji, ye electric hai, shock deti hai. Sarji, ye electric hai, shock deti hai. The fun apart, what I would like to highlight here is, the average improves when we have a smooth road. But when we go into city, when we do start, stop, start, stop, the average is very less, right? So if you have a project where you get bulk of requirement and then there is no requirement, again the requirement starts and then it stops. If that's the culture or that's the processes how the processes are run, then probably you won't be able to achieve flow. At the same time, we have to look at, understand the full value stream. Those who are not aware of value stream, value stream is the thing, but all the important steps which are delivering value or not delivering value from cash concept to cash, right? So flow has to be analyzed. What are the delays? What are the waste which are there? If we reduce delays and eliminate waste, we will get a very good flow. Flow in the sense that, okay, the things are flowing very smoothly. When it breaks, if there are defects, right? So if defects are there, uh, it, it won't work. So focus should be there that everybody works together as one team. Defect prevention is more important than defect detection. Let's integrate frequently, use some automation so that the flow should be maintained. Have a smaller batch size, limit work in progress, right? Identify the bottlenecks. You have to work as a whole, right? Systems thinking is the key here. Let me give you one example. The development work, say the requirements are there. So it's a concept and then we deliver something. If you do a graphical analysis, uh, flow chart is created, then you will figure it out that the development part, if we even double the speed, then I'll say overall, the duration will not reduce more than 10 to 15%. Because there are other chunks where the delays are there. We have to remove the waste which is causing there. So in this case, what used to happen, the development was done very fast. But in production deployment, it was used to take very long time. So we started measuring how long it takes from development done to production deploy. Because the bottleneck was not development. Bottleneck was not the requirement, identification and finalization. The bottleneck was from development done to production deployment. That was the closing. So everywhere if you are fast, but if you identify the bottleneck where it is causing the maximum delay, you will be able to improve the flow. So flow is very important. See, shortest sustainable lead time. Sustainable as well and the shortest as well. It should move fast. If everybody works at 100% utilization, probably that won't give you a good result. So let's look at how safe scaled agile framework implements flow, right? So first foremost, value stream mapping. Build in quality is one of the four core values. Without is you cannot scale. At a scale, you cannot scale crappy code, right? Cadence and synchronization. So it's about feedback, right? The flow also depends on the feedback. If you get the feedback, probably you will be able to understand the system and take corrective action. Otherwise, only you won't know what is happening in other stuff. So Kanban has been implemented at multiple level with work in progress limit. It's not just for development team. Even you have a portfolio Kanban, you have a program Kanban, and the limits are set up there as well. The flow should be there. 
continuous exploration integration and deployment these are these all things are happening parallel as if the development or integration happens and then if you start looking at the exploration and identify requirements and then prioritize again you are going back to start stop start stop that's not going to work see even the agile release train right the train itself it says that okay it's a moving right? it's a moving object the flow should be there that's how to safe implement this one so what we are looking right now we want to deliver value which is shortest sustainable lead time and then there are four pillars uh, the house of lean is the metaphor that's what we are looking at we looked at respect for people and culture and flow how we can implement it and how safe as implemented let's look at innovation as well so innovation when it will happen unless you get a time and space for creativity probably it won't happen producers innovate customers validate like i don't know who requested that we need touch screen mobiles but then apple invented we validated right i was reading today only that apple is the largest watchmaker in the world i don't know whether we said that we need but producers you know what and the customers validate right couple of examples i would like to give you see pivot without mercy or guilt what does it mean pivot in the sense that at a certain point of time you inspect and adapt and then you might change your direction and then you might discontinue that path as well like we have operating system a mobile operating system android right and mac so uh, windows also had a operating system windows right windows 10 probably i don't remember the exact one but windows also had an operating microsoft had an operating system for mobile and they had invested lots of money on this one they had promoted very hard but they figure it out that it's not going to sustain they are not getting money not getting the value what they had identified so now they had invested probably millions billion dollar on it and then they took a decision that yeah we are innovating something new but probably it won't work and then they stop so no guilt for that as well this is okay nah, we don't want to go for this one go see used to call it gamba right gamba is what is a japanese word when they actually actual things happen right that's what we call gamba let me share my experience on go see so early around 18 19 years back uh, i was in malaysia and then the company for which i was working uh, we had a sold one software to malaysian company and we went there for customization and other stuff now we were supposed to roll out the software from monday it was around 20 years back so completely different we are we had a very small team and then we were supposed to roll out in the next week and then the factory manager it was for the semiconductor industries where they make integrated circuits ics and other stuff so the factory manager took me to the shop floor very rarely you get a chance to go there and other stuff then he took me there so i had in my mind what we are building and then i got a chance to see what they are expecting and they took me to the shop floor it was around 1 hour and then i asked various questions and other stuff i was try to map that whether whatever we are building will work here or not and then i figured out that probably we had developed only 10% of the stuff the actual challenge is what they have probably it's not something like uh, they were working on a manual paper a paper and then they will putting some numbers and then we were saying that no you should put everything on the system but that was not practical and then i came to know we came to know only after i went to the shop floor and understood what they are doing so go see innovation if you really want to innovate something you have to be with the customers right experiment and feedback you know something new apply and then get the feedback and then again change that's the cycle we have to follow everyone can innovate this is the 
I think new mindset and many companies are following this one. In one of the company which I was working 10 years back, they had a separate department called innovator, innovators. So I was not part of that. Normally, when we go for lunch, then we just jokingly, jokingly were saying that we cannot innovate. Actually, it's their responsibility, innovators who will innovate. But that's actually wrong, right? If you get a time and space for creativity, everyone can innovate. That's what we want to work in. And continuous exploration and work with customer. This is also the key to uh, innovation, which will deliver value. Remember the first sentence, it is possible to complete everything on time, but still not deliver any value. Because the demands have changed. The answers have changed. The market has changed. New competitors are there in the market. The fourth pillar is relentless improvement. The improvements are must. And then you have to be ruthless. See, continuous improvement is also a good word. But relentless is saying there is no other choice. You have to completely focus on this one. You have to work like you are constant sense of danger, right? So this is not applicable just to companies, but to employees as well, right? We have to upgrade ourselves. We are in constant sense of danger. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. See, there are companies, Kodak, Bajaj, Hertz. Something surprising. The company is around 100 plus years old and they file Hertz. It, it's a, a company where they, you can rent a car. Right? Mm -hmm. So this one is 100 years old company and they filed for bankruptcy. Probably they were not able to figure it out what Uber, Ola, Uber and Lyft they are doing to their business. There are no more there. Second one is optimize the whole. Right? Look at the systems thinking perspective, not just about optimizing one thing. You want to make sure that the development should happen fast. So what do you do? You get some more developers. But what about testers? What about the support engineers? If they are not there, probably you won't be able to improve. So when we talk about the improvement, even the minor improvement certainly would work out very well. But we have to figure it out that how do we do this one? Identify lean tools to identify, apply lean tools to identify and address root causes. Go into bit detail. Why this happened? See in the Toyota production way, right? If a major defect is found out, they had a bell. They will ring the bell and then they will, it will stop the production. Everybody will come together and then figure it out why, why the defect happened. Why is such a mistake happened? And then they will find out and will make sure that it doesn't happen. So they will even stop the production at that time and make sure that this one is. This is a lean tool, right? Reflect at key milestones. Very simple, right? If I start my journey from my home to Mumbai, then I will reflect at each probably tall taxis, the tall tax that where I stand right now and where I want to go. So if that is not happening, probably I won't be making any improvements. So let's look at it, the innovation and relentless improvement, how that one is implemented by SAFE. We talked about the IP iterations, right? Innovation and planning iterations. That's the key. Inspect and adapt at every point, right? Even in retrospective as well, you will still will have retrospective. You will also have inspect and adapt and you will have problem solving workshop. And that is the reason you want to innovate. You want to relentlessly improve the stuff. Continuous learning culture. If you go with the same mindset, with the same knowledge, probably you won't be able to figure out something new. So look for transparency and empiricism. What is happening right now? What I think we, what should happen and what is happening is completely different thing, right? Manager might say, yeah, the team should do 30 story points every sprint. But if the first three story points for velocity for the average velocity for the first three sprints is around 15 or 20, then we are not doing following empiricism. Look at what the team is delivering. Probably it calls for many other aspects, but transparency, empiricism is the key. Cross-functional team, right? 
you work together don't work in silos if you are just master of what you are doing see we we know about the t shaped skill and now pie shaped skill so you should be master in couple of at least couple of aspects couple of skills competencies and then you should know um, other as other areas as well that's the current culture but the relentless improvement innovation is the key very very important sometimes what i have seen in the retrospective they are not able to figure it out anything unique they said no i think whatever the current way we are working is good enough we don't see any other improvement areas so there are two things one probably they are not able to identify what can be improved and second one is maybe the improvement they see is very minor and they might say no no it won't have any impact so why to implement why focus on this one but the example i'm going to share about team sky they had an amazing turn around team sky is the name of british cycling team it's a very nice story you can search on the net as well let me briefly talk about this one because it's very much related to relentless improvement the marginal gains right that's what we were discussing so team sky the british cycling team they had a new director in 2002 and it took 4 5 years to bring the turn around but the turn around was amazing when he joined in the past 76 years the team cycling team had one just one gold medal right let's talk about tour de france the tour de france started in 1903 the most prestigious cycling event in the world and then we know right in 1903 or till today as well the britain's the supremacy is still there they ruled many nations as well though till 2007 or 2002 2012 so around 110 years of history they had not won even a single time to de france now this new director came right he he did something amazing he focused on the kaizen a kaizen is his word dave braceford is his name dave braceford kaizen is his name he said that improvement alone won't work i need ruthless improvement we have to figure it out what can be improved so let's look at the data from 2007 to 2017 from 2007 to 2017 the british cycling team won 178 championships they won 69 medals in olympic commonwealth games and para olympic games and from 2012 to 2017 in 6 years they won tour de france title five times that's something amazing right so did they find some breakthrough no it was all about marginal gains small improvement what dave brace for talked about he said let's focus on an area and identify even 1% improvement not 10 20 50 just 1% improvement in multiple areas and if the aggregation because of the aggregation of the marginal gains we will certainly going to get the tour de france title he said in 2010 that we should be getting the title in 5 years of time but he was wrong they got it in 3 years of time so he looked at everything he said that okay we have to make sure that the cycle is doesn't do not fall ill right so he said okay which hand shop they should be using and then even during the competition time he said do not hand shake now covid was not that at that time but he said don't do hand shake because there are chances that you might get infection he also talked about pillows and then mattresses they said whatever the best the pillows and mattresses which which will give you the best sleep let's took it aerodynamic they tried on the wind tunnel what kind of clothes the dust 
so many things so what he focused was on one percent improvement in multiple areas and then he changed the stuff completely the numbers are amazing that's what the dave breaks for to did on this one so relentless improvement will certainly give value but in all these things to happen we need leadership to come to the for forefront let's look at the survey which was uh, 14th annual state of agile report 2020 version 1 what are the common challenges or top challenges while adopting and scaling agile so if you look at this one the first one general organization resistance to change is related to culture not enough leadership leadership inconsistent processes and practices across team probably again related to management organization culture inadequate management support so most of them are related to leadership the management can change that's what edward deming says people are already doing their best the problems are with the systems and only management can change the system so the onus is on leadership to make sure that these pillars are implemented and then the focus should always be on the value delivery right i would like to quote some of the things from our ancient culture ancient scripture in mahabharat uh, someone asked that uh, i think you this is uh, in this is kingdom someone asked that how do we reduce or remove corruption so answer by vidur was and vyas muni was raja kalasya karana so people normally follow leaders and even gita shrimad bhagavad gita they talk about yad yad acharati shreshta so the shreshta that means the smes the leaders people normally acharati they follow what they do so if we really want to focus on how the culture or the flow innovation or relentless improvement will be there in a, any particular organization it all depends on the leaders right? today is ganesh chaturthi as well right ganapati it's actually lead by example is a leadership right a leader of group that's all we call it ganpati and then it's actually symbolic god uh, there each of each body part of ganesh talks about something it it gives some meaning to us like the ears are very big right so what it says that the leader should know about everything the leaders are the ears are big but at the same time it's something like it cleans up right so only listen to good stuff or listen to everything but only take inside only the good stuff like uh, the soup right we call it in marathi it is used for actually cleaning the cereals so only the good ones will remain inside the the dust waste will be outside so leader should be like ganapati who will listen to everything but will have a sense to understand what is right and what is wrong we call ganapati lambodar as well right so lambodar is a big stomach so in another way we can say the leader should be trusted by everyone if he gets to know some confidential information sensitive information about others or team members he won't share it with others he will keep it with himself and then there are many other stuff we'll talk about that some other but what i want to highlight here is the leadership they they have to lead by example i remember one incident when two teams uh, two companies were supposed to do a partnership and then when the leader of one company came to another company for signing documents and other stuff he said that no i'm i i looked at your people and i am not interested in continuing the partnership and then the, the company the company director was very much amazed why what happened and i said he said that i know the what kind of culture you have i just heard someone saying that yeah that's good enough but we don't believe in that's good enough culture we want to excel so leadership is the key in almost all the aspects the leader they have to exemplify the values and principles of lean agile and safe 
you have to make it a learning organization then only it will happen otherwise it won't happen so our focus is on delivering value shortest sustainable lead time and if the leadership is not there they are not learning they are not leading by example probably that will not happen the pillars which the leadership has to tighten they have to make it strong our respect for people and culture they are the one doing the work they are human beings the way we treat them will set the culture the flow the continuous flow sustainable and shortest it, it shouldn't be start stop start no innovation and relentless improvement that's the key remember the team sky example the cycling example even a small one person gain also will change the direction so we should be focusing on that as well and the safe house of lean we also looked at it how scale agile framework implements those into practices and that's how scale agile framework is focused on the value delivery yeah with that i will end i hope you have really found value on from this presentation and then you can certainly implement some of the stuff uh, directly uh, let's open it for q and a guys uh, let me stop sharing yeah how did you find this one hi rahul i uh, really like that uh, example by brelsford that, that that's really amazing that really connects to to this uh, topic and you also uh, connected that kaizen thing i never thought of uh, kaizen also can be connected with the the way safe is implemented so thank you so much Yep. Hi teams, if you have any questions, you can also put it on the chat. Yeah, uh, one question. Um, this is Chitranjan. So, how can we recommend to leadership team that we need to, you know, go for lean? So, what best way? I mean, like, um, <clears throat> Vijay, do you want to answer that one? Uh, yeah, I mean, you are actually uh, taking away from the safe uh, thing. Yeah, that's a good question, though. safe is anyways derived out of uh, you know lean is also a, the certain principles of lean are implemented in uh, safe yes we can recommend any organization go to go towards lean i generally see in your management some of the lean principles are already implemented but management do not know what way it is implemented uh, and nowadays there are so many frameworks uh, methods are coming in together and organizations tend to mix it up so if you take a pure approach like you are saying uh, lean yes that is that is a really good way however lean does not tell you so many methods or frameworks but it tells you a lot of principles so you will have to be thoughtful about implementing uh, lean especially the principles part of it Chitran, does that answer uh, your question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, uh, just to add, uh, I think uh, Rahul also referred to Gemba. In the Western world, even the HBR has recognized uh, Gemba Walk as the most economic way of management. Management by walking, and that. Uh, thing is actually being referred from lean uh, practices and uh, nowadays management is also believing in gamba walk no reporting uh, but going on and talking to the people who are actually working on the floor so that's how you know it, it's a, it's a lean conversation and lean management so that's a simplest way of management
we have a question from amol yeah he says in practical case are we really following house of lean and who takes a responsibility about it and uh, monitors how teams are following house of lean hmm good question so when do we say see there are two things right uh, i would say activity and results the activities might be happening but if the results are not visible then something is wrong so even if we say that the innovations are there we have a very good culture we flow flow is very smooth but if the roof which is the value delivery is not happening or we are not doing it sustainably or not in the shortest possible time then probably we are not doing it right so ultimately it will then go to the practices and also to the leadership team as well that whether they are really aware of this one are they stopping people from innovating something or not giving them time and space for creativity and other stuff but from the monitors perspective rather than monitoring the pillars we have to monitor the value delivery whether the customers are happy or not if the customers are not getting the value on time right, or what they are expecting we are not doing following the agile values customer collaboration or contract negotiation so customer collaboration is not happening or we are not responding to change probably we won't be able to do that one right and then some of the so again let me go back to the earlier slides so what is scaled agile framework right safe for lean enterprises this is about the practices competencies right so if we can directly implement some of those are the proven proven in the sense that for some of the organization it worked so let's start from there and then we'll see whether what is best for us right and then we can move forward so yeah in the scaled agile framework it gives ready made okay you can try out xyz if it doesn't work perfectly fine you will have you will be able to figure it out on your own but as uh, deming said that only people are already doing their best only management can change the system so more focus is on leadership so if uh, uh, somal i don't know what is your role but if managers are at the top level they are not learning new things new ways of learning or attending such sessions not this sessions but anything or they are spending time and uh, arranging such sessions for the management team and for the team employees then probably that won't happen right yeah and amol since you also asked about the practical whether it is practical so i would like to give a certain names where i worked as coach so i'm working with siemens i'm working with uh, work with uh, bny mellon or deloitte so this is the companies even so forth these were the companies wherein we really implemented safe house of lean absolutely the way it is required however i have seen a little bit of deviation after certain uh, years or months kind of and especially uh, that innovation thing actually goes for a toss but if the ownership culture is there with the team they bounce back and they ask for these change and that's what i have seen those those teams are asking for change and restoration of the safe house of lean or those practices so yes it's practical yeah so amol uh, did it make sense what we uh, told you yeah amol i think said yeah okay so amol yeah. is speaking on chat he is respecting everybody's time might be there is too much noise it at his home and then he want to communicate differently i uh, we won't call it noise because today's aartis are going on yes 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 uh, so i have one question i am nimesh uh, so we talk about the trust as a, one of the important factor and i just uh, share my one experience uh, which i face see a trust is a important factor in agile scrum or wherever it uh, follow any methods i see few people are taking advantage of it how means as a team there is seven members of team members are there 
Mm-hmm. Three, four people are working very hard. Two or three are very lean on their work. Although able to complete the sprint on time, mm-hmm. because their load are taking by someone else, yeah. or it is passes to someone else. So how, as a scrum master or agile, how to handle these things? Because if I ask questions, what are you doing? And you are not uh, taking your task. That it is not uh, means I am not re- trusting them. That's like it is a mix uh, situation, right? So how to handle such situation? Rahul, are you? Yeah, you can go ahead. I also will <clears throat> share my views. The best way of handling this, you know, trust not getting uh, implemented properly, or maybe. It it is getting advantage of. I believe in something called as transparency. Uh, Rahul also mentioned about empiricism in the start of this particular session. So, empiricism says that if you want to learn from your historical experiences and then improve on that's what he said. Relentless improvement. You need three factors or three pillars of uh, empiricism are transparency, inspection, and adaptation. so if you have a systemic transparency wherein whatever is happening in the system is transparent to people who are actually executing it so i am saying your team members so you as a scrum master need not ask people questions but that visibility or data or transparency should be asking the question itself team members should also feel that difference if you actually create that transparent environment that should be enough however sometimes you might have to take a different role altogether right uh, sometimes scrum master always uh, generally is a servant leader but sometimes uh, since you have a, a stakeholder connectivity or something like that so you you can also take another uh, role wherein you you act as a coach to an individual rather than asking questions act as a coach and as a coach you also need to be transparent about what is being felt by others uh, you may not be uh, telling that what i am feeling or something but what others in the team are feeling and that's how you can coach those individuals uh, so important uh, yes nimesh so is it okay if uh, and just I, i what i interpret uh, that i can talk with that person separately not about asking a questions but about the team feeling that uh, few people feel that uh, you are not taking uh, as much as load or sharing with uh, in a sprint uh, enough uh, as per your capability you are capable uh, but not uh, so is it okay directly talk with like that or some other way uh primarily i would go ahead with you know transparency the systemic transparency so that people can see what's happening in the system uh, not only feeling but transparency of the data or this thing apart from that if i am a scrum master i'm handling my team well uh or or giving them the environment of uh, transparency openness then i would believe them to come out with these observations so that would be an outcome in in retrospectives or any other common sessions people generally should come out with those observations rather than you telling okay that would be the right success of a scrum master okay i mean we can we cannot directly go into so many details right now in, in a very small session but just giving you certain hints transparency is the biggest hint that we are giving you okay got it yeah rahul like yeah so very well said uh, vijay so i would like to add on to that one is uh, we also can focus on look at the what motivates people right so autonomy mastery and purpose and the pink pink uh, anil pink the, yeah the book drive the drive right you yeah. can look at that as well so there may so you can you, even some of the points when we say in the retrospective we don't blame people right but the processes and then overall aspect should be there and i think in your team probably people are worried about having conflicts 
they probably are trying to avoid the conflicts but i think the environment of like raising the conflict for the good of project is not there if the vision and clarity is there why we are doing this one and who in ultimately is impacted by this one but that certainly would drive the people that why we are doing this one probably if another point i would say is if the focus is on team right the, the team if if i commit i already highlighted one point in the presentation that if i commit that i am going to do this one then by who can cook i will make sure that i will do because it is not said by my manager but i have committed so that is a different aspect and that also sometimes will work so those are the couple of points uh, you can try out okay sure thank you yeah we are almost at our time yeah so um, thank you vijay and ajal waters for organizing this one a uh, very good opportunity for me to share my knowledge and learn as well and thank you everyone on ganesh chaturthi that you have decided to spend time and learn something new on this one sure. we'll share the recording as well post uh, this uh, session so, in couple of days so i have question means where we are posting this because last recording also i am not able to find means any oh, okay. for any channel so we are hosting it on youtube uh, channel however we might not have sent an email so we will just check and by monday i think all the links should be with you on email okay thank you sure